We had six teams, like I said, and two individual teams. Now, we, you can't hear from all of them today there, so you're going to hear from the first two teams. Mike Dreves. Mike will be speaking this morning. Uh, Mike is my right-hand man. Uh, he does all the finances and all the keeps us together. Uh, he's the organized person. Steve Holtz, by the way. Stand up for a second, Steve, there. Steve is my left-hand man that does that. And we got a center-hand man now, and that's John Smith, who uh, stand up, uh, John. He's our youth coordinator. This has been a key that has just blossomed our ministry and our youth ministry. This is a youth ministry. So these guys here, right here, are the, the people that uh, have organized this and have been doing this for the last year to get where we're at. So I'd like to hear a round of applause for these people there. Now, we had an unfortunate uh, situation with our team member here was uh, Zoo Jess Zuket. She's right over here. Jess, stand up for a second there. Jess lost her grandma, and she had to come back here on Tuesday, and she flew back here, and uh, this is your mother with you today there, and her mother is joining us today there, and uh, what a blessing uh, that is to have her and, and Jess here with us. We have another person that wasn't able to go with us there was Leah Billingsloo had a concussion, and uh, right at the last minute she was not, and she was on this team. We also have Wyatt McDivick. We have Brooke Corelli. And we also have Tahila Cavanis. Okay, this is team number four, which is going to be speaking today through Mike. Mike, you'd like to come on up? Thank you. You guys come and have a seat and come on up, Mike. There'll probably be a lot of microphone adjusting today just because people are different heights. If you get a chance, Ask Scott about the inspector for Avery County, who's seven, who's seven foot two and used to play in the NBA. Scott's a large man, but he looks like uh, a little teeny guy next to Tommy Burlinson, right? right. All right. Uh, apologize if this will be a little bit jumbled. Uh, 500 miles. We, I felt like I got up at 515 yesterday and drove 500 miles. That's, that was our day yesterday. Uh, this week, uh, we talked a lot about the Trinity. I never heard the word Trinity this week, but I heard a lot about the Holy Spirit, heard a lot about Jesus Christ, heard a lot about God, obviously. The Holy Spirit did some awesome things and moved in some hearts down in Avery County. You'll hear about that later, which was pretty amazing. Uh, I just wanted to mention something about what touched me, and I'll, I'll say three things. Um, the first thing is... Uh, it, is I already talked a little bit about the Holy Spirit, and, and obviously we're in need of a Savior every day with Jesus Christ, but um, just something about uh, that touched me about how I saw God this week. Um, Avery County is unbelievably gorgeous. Wow. I mean, it's, I love, I come from Grove City every time I come to church, and Route 8 is a great ride, but times 10. I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, and in Matthew... Uh, Matthew 10, uh, Jesus says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny yet? None, uh, not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So do not be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. And God knows how many hairs are on your head. And I was coming through that just amazing. Greg and I were coming down through Virginia and it was just gorgeous. God knows how many leaves are on every one of those trees. And I was just blown away. Just thought it was awesome. So I wanted to just, if you get to see some pictures, we went up to the Blue Ridge Parkway, and you can ask Butch a great story about the Blue Ridge Parkway, which was amazing. Uh, but it was just unbelievably gorgeous. So please, if you get a chance, talk to some people and try and get to see some photos. Something else I wanted to briefly share about were showers. Uh, ASP, one of the, f there's two big questions. Is there air conditioning? And what are the showers like? Those are two big questions. Sometimes they're inside. Sometimes they're outside. Sometimes they're in a corn crib outside. Sometimes the showers are hot, and sometimes the showers are cold. We, had, uh, we were in little locker rooms, and we had three showers for the men and three showers for the women. And I don't know about the women's side, but two showers were hot, 
and one shower was cold. And I don't know why. It was shower one and two were hot and shower three was cold. Some people braved it out, went in shower three. Some people waited because they wanted to take a hot shower in shower one and shower two. Uh, we also have uh, the Methodist church has, has safe sanctuaries. And they don't want kids and adults, for obvious reasons, showering at the same time. So you get a window to shower in. You get the, 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 the kids were from like 6 to 625. And the adults were from like 630 to 7. And that's the way it went like every hour. So if you missed your shower opportunity, you had to wait like a half an hour. So on Friday night, uh, Todd and I wanted to finish. We were putting some vinyl siding in for a lovely 73-year-old woman, Miss Patty. Don't get on the wrong side of her. She's 73, but she taught me how to drive every day out of the driveway. And I also saw her concealed weapons training certificate that she got 100% on in February as a 73-year-old woman posted proudly on the wall. So I didn't mess with Miss Patty. But we were, we were siding her house, and we got back, and we had missed our window of opportunity to shower. So we had dinner dishes, so we had to eat first. So we ate, we did dinner dishes, and we missed our opportunity again, and we had to sit through evening gathering, which was great. But it's 9 o'clock, and I haven't taken a shower yet, and I worked all day. And, and you know, that's, that's a long day, and you, you just want to take your shower. But for me, I don't know if I wanted to because I didn't want to wash off ASP, at the end of the week, that last, that last shower, it's over. So I want to encourage you. I think I want to encourage all the guys in blue shirts and women in blue shirts, don't wash off ASP. Take it with you. And I want to encourage all of you, when you leave church today, don't take a shower. Don't wash it off. Take it with you. Because we do that too often. We compartmentalize stuff. ASP's over. Life starts. Church is over life starts. We can't do that. It should be like this all the time. So don't take that shower when you leave the service today. Last thing, um, Scott, would you come read this? Because I'm going to, cr- I'll cry. Read that for me. Treasures in heaven. This is from Matthew uh, 6, 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moths and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Uh a lot of people, their home is their treasure. And we talked about... Maybe in a minute. <laughs> I thought I was the emotional one, and uh, tears, tears come when there's a change of something in your heart. And uh, when you have a hard time saying it because deep down inside, wells within you and it's just something why God does that to us there that with inside ourselves and we, we just it just breaks us down right down to the core and that's what that's what we need to 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 see today and this is why we go to ASP and uh, that's what can I say uh, Mike and I are very close our bunks are right like beside our shelves and we are brothers yeah we are brothers in Christ but he's just like a, just like a, another brother to me and uh, my brother Don, by the way, I forgot to mention him, who wasn't able to go, and uh, it was just so great to see him. We miss you, Don. We need you back next year, uh, uh, but uh, we're not sure whether you're, you're in number four, because Todd Plowman Shemp has taken over, so. <laughs> Those are inside jokes that you have to, to understand when you go to ASP. There's things that just, just you can't express, and... Uh, that's just one of them. 
I'm going to cover the next team here, and uh, it's uh, Chuck Porter's team. Chuck Porter had his, uh, pardon me? Oh, well, come on up. <laughs> Okie doke. I am sorry. This, this is Tahila. She can sing and she can dance, and let's see if she can talk. Uh. Hi. Uh, <laughs> um, wow, that's the best word I can say for my first experience at ASP. I mean, if that would be all that I could say, that's probably what I'd be saying. But I want to. I want to say a lot, but I won't waste all your time. I'm just going to take a little bit. Um, when I first was coming here to ASP, I didn't really know what to expect. I was like, "All right, I'm going to someplace new. This is going to be amazing. I'm going to go out of state. I'm going to go and help some people." But I really, I really didn't know the reason why I was going. I was mostly thinking of myself. And through the week, I, was, I was kept asking myself, what am I here for? Who am I doing this for? What's my reason? And I think it was about halfway through the week, we started to get the siding up on Miss Patty's house. And Miss Patty is this amazing, oh my gosh, she's such a sweet woman, makes the most beautiful cakes, most beautiful food. Oh my goodness, I wish I could have some right now. <laughs> well... We started getting the siding up on our house, and the moment that I realized what I was doing this for was whenever I walk over to her, and she's just sitting and looking at the, at the wall, just, just admiring it, and that's just this beautiful smile on her face. I says, Patty, what, are you okay? Is something wrong? She says, no, not at all. She says, it's so pretty. I'm like, what, what do you mean? She says, I'm going to be warm this winter. I just stopped. I was like, she's going to be warm this winter. And why? Because my team and I, we all came here for the work of God and for her. And not only our team, the other teams too. We came here to North Carolina to help other families who needed a little bit extra. And that moment I was just like flabbergasted. It was amazing. It was just beautiful. Just a little 10 seconds of her saying, I'm going to be warm this winter. I'm not going to have to leave and evacuate my home. She says, you know, I remember when we started, she says, I'm not going to, I'm going to stay in my house for the rest of my life. I'm not going to go anywhere. Oh, it was such a sweet moment. And as I was coming home from ASB, I was just like, I found my reason why I came. It wasn't about me. It had nothing to do with me. It was about God. And it was about showing others what you can do with God. It was, that's it. <laughs> Okay, let's go on to team number two here. It's uh, Chuck Porter's team. Chuck has not, uh, is not with us. Uh, they went back to, in fact, they're going to, we stay with another group, uh, another church group, and they were from uh, close to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and that's where Chuck was leaving to and going to, and he's to be worshiping in their church today, so that's, that's pretty neat stuff. He had his two granddaughters, Kayla and Paige Martin, and they went with us. They're from Slippy Rock. They're not here today, and so Chuck's not here. But we also have Gab Garmung. This is Gab's first time, and he brought his daughter, um, Gabrielle. You two can stand on up. And we have Rachel Anderson. Okay, this is, well, it's really team number six, but team number two that's going to be speaking today. So uh, um, this is them. Let's uh, give them a round of applause. And... Come on up and speak, Gab. Well, this is my first trip to ASP, and and I'm, I find I'm still finding out little things that Scott and Mike are holding back on me. And one of them I just found out, and that was you need to speak first, okay, because or you're going to be needing this. So, but. Uh, Okay, uh, I'll start out here with, for years I've seen the ASP teams coming back and, and you know, I've seen the emotion, I've seen uh, how they've been touched. I knew that they went down to work on houses and uh, I guess maybe I didn't pay close enough attention 
or maybe it's something that you just need to experience, you know, to be able to fully grasp what all is involved, okay? And, uh, but for whatever reason, I wasn't aware uh, that there is way, uh, there's a lot more to ASP than just going down and working on houses and sharing with your fellow workers, okay? Uh, their motto down there and what their kind of goal is is to make these houses warmer, safer, and drier, okay? And uh, the Appalachia Service Project is what the ASP stands for there. And the service part of it, sure, it's in, it involves working on the houses and everything, but it, it also is service to the soul for everybody involved. Uh, I found out that it is as much about building relationships as it is about building roofs and walkways and uh, foundations, everything. It's just just kind of hard to put into words. Uh, just to, to give you a little synopsis here, we, we, uh, we built relationships with with ourselves with I, I had relationships with adults that I really I, I've known for years okay but never really had a relationship with okay youth that I've known you know as my daughter's friends and I've interacted a little bit but I got to to have a relationship with these with these young young people uh, a church from Chapel Hill was there the same time we were now they're 500 miles away, and I've never met any of these people. And by the end of the week, you know, we're hugging and loving and just, you know, loving on these people and uh, sharing in so many things. And uh, it was just an amazing, an, an amazing interaction there. And their youth, you know, as well. The ASP staff, you know, I, I, I left there feeling like, you know, Friend, you know, true friends in Christian love with these people. Like, I, I've got cell phone numbers. I've already talked to them since we left. You know, just pretty amazing. Uh, the cooks, okay, uh, they worked for us every day. Uh, you know, they shared with us. We, you know, we had so many interactions with them. The community, believe it or not, you even interact with the community. Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples that, you know, we, we'd go for ice cream. We tried to go for ice cream every night. Okay, sometimes it didn't work out, okay? But uh, the one night we went for ice cream, and uh, we go into, there's like, it's like a little diner slash ice cream place. And we go in there, and there's some people eating dinner and stuff, and we're in there, you know, and we're uh, in line, and, and some of the younger folks were, were talking a little bit there and getting a little bit louder, so I went over and I said, hey, guys, let's keep it down. There's people in here, you know, trying to enjoy their dinner, you know, and they did. They kept quiet. Next thing you know, the phone call comes in, and Scott says, hey, everybody, it's Dawn. Can we have three hip, hip hoorays here, you know? <laughs> so that kind of went, went the quietness there, you know, and... and one family got up and went to walk out, and Lou, you know, who were doing damage control there, and Lou and I talked to them, and they said, it's fine. We enjoy seeing you here. It was, I was worrying over nothing. They really enjoyed it. Uh, it you know, in another way that, like, we touched the community, you know, just, just, this is just one little interaction. Uh, we took up a collection for one of the families there, and we wanted to get them gas cards, okay? Their two-and-a-half-year-old uh, daughter... Um, a daughter, I believe it was a daughter, he, she is going through, she has already had one transplant, and she has to have two more transplants, okay? So we thought we'd take up a collection for them, and uh, so I thought I'd just go out and we'll get them gas cards. Well, found out gas cards in Appalachia are not just an easy thing to find. So went into this one place, of Valero, this is a pretty big chain down there, and the lady at the counter, she said, oh, she said, I, I don't know whether we have any. Uh, I, I think the ones we have are in the safe. Let me call my manager. Of course, and things are transpiring here. It's taking more time. So she's asking what we're doing. And she's getting involved in what we're doing, you know. And now she's starting to feel this. And 
So, well, the manager came over, you know, from her house, gets the safe unlocked, and there's no more in there. They're out of them, okay? So they went, and we thought, well, we'll get prepaid Visa cards. So we got those up there and everything, and, and the prepaid Visa card, I found out that if you get a $150 prepaid Visa card, it costs you $170 or something. So I said, you know what, maybe we better not do that. She says, I'll pay the extra $20. Don't be, you know, so now she's really, I said, no, you don't need to do that. Let's go ahead and do it. We'll go ahead and take care of it. And uh, anyways, the Visa cards were so old that they wouldn't even register. They couldn't, the bar tag wouldn't work. So now... Now the girl behind the counter is in tears. She is crying. She wants to help so much. And I said, it's fine. Look, we've done our part. We'll let God do the rest, and we'll just give them the cash, and we'll trust that they're going to do the right things with it. So, but anyways, there's, a, 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 you know, some of the, you know, little things that I, we interacted with the community. Uh, and, of course, the people who were there to help, Okay. These people are, uh, you know, they're, they're all in rough situations. Uh, the house where we were at, um, uh, the, the, the lady who owned the house, Frances, is 89 years old, okay? And she lost her husband in 1984, and she's kind of been somewhat of an introvert ever since that happened. She doesn't get out at all. She just doesn't associate with people. And her daughter, Sherry, who is 61, lives in the house with her, okay? So we started to try to build relationships with them. And I found out sometimes it's not as easy as you think to build these relationships. The first night we were there, uh, that we walked in and, and we had, they had hee-haw playing, okay? And, and I'm a hee-haw fan, you know, and... So I'm watching a little bit there and, and talking with her, and, you know, and I said, oh, I, I love Buck Owens and Roy Clark, you know, and oh, a minute went by there, and she says, so you like Roy Clark, do you? I said, yeah, I really like Roy Clark, and she says, I don't care much for Roy Clark. <laughs> so, wow, so I thought, well, we're going to have to work a little bit on this relationship, but, <laughs> but, but they opened up, and, you know, by the third day, you know, not only did we have a relationship, when we left their house, it was like I was leaving, you know, <laughs> like <clears throat> my own mother's house, okay? Uh, I got to move on here. Okay, and then they had a little great-granddaughter, Emma, okay? And uh, Gabrielle's going to speak about Emma here. What a special young child, okay? And we didn't get to see her the last two days, I think because they wanted us to get more work done on the house because she was quite a chatterbox and she, just a special little girl. Uh, you know, and then, and then you throw the Ralph and Louie factor in there. Uh, what an incredible impact that Jesus had through them, you know, I had to mention your name, Lou, okay? But it, Jesus working through these men just, you know, uh, through witnessing and praying for and, and having, heal, you know, having healing prayers and anointments and just unbelievable, just unbelievable stuff. Uh, I'll go on to some of the things here, and I'll get moving so Lou can get up here, and, and Gabrielle. Uh, I saw amazing things this week. Uh, you know, here's just a few things that we did. You know, we worked hard together, okay? We studied together. We prayed together. We sang together. We danced together. We ate ice cream. We adventured together, you know? And sometimes you didn't know what you were getting into. What, you know, Scott tells us we're just going out to look at uh, some beautiful views. Next thing you know, we're on a trail like the last of the Mohicans. You know, and, and trying to get through there, you know. So real adventures that were special. Uh, we celebrated together. We joked together, you know. I, I'm still trying to get my my card for the boys of summer. Uh, maybe next year I'll be able to get that. But keep that, keep that quiet. Okay. All right, sir. Uh, we took meds together. You know, Greg and I, we talked about our meds about every day, you know. And, and the girls and us, we shared... Uh, I got informed it's drama mean, 
not Dramamine. I told them that the girls' version was Dramamine, not. <laughs> but we took Dramamine or Dramamine every day. Uh, we mourned together. Uh, we suffered together. Uh, the guy, <laughs> Mason, the guy bunked right beside me, he has, I didn't even ask him because it was clear that he had some form of uh, Hodgkin's, uh, you know, or not Hodgkin's, I'm sorry, of, uh, what's, Parkinson's, of Parkinson's. And uh, so, you know, and we prayed and we anointed him and uh, Jesus through us, you know, we anointed him, but uh, Ralph did, he was just incredible. And uh, we, we truly, you know, prayed for this man and, and, and we loved together. You know, I saw, saw incredible leadership from our guys, from Scott and Mike and John and, and, and Mark and Tracy and Steve. And, you know, and I don't want to leave anybody out. I mean, the, 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 the quiet warriors like Jeff and Joe and and Todd, and, you know, and I'm so afraid starting to name people, and Kelton, and Nick, you know, Tracy, you know, just so many, uh, Tammy, you know, uh, by naming people, I'm just, I'm afraid I'll leave somebody out, but all of you, all of you, you know, uh, <laughs> Butch and Sandy, you know, <laughs> uh, Robin, you know, just everybody was just incredible down here, and just a special, special time. Uh, I saw youth who worked their butts off that could not even, you know, they're used to a certain amount of sleep. And, and, you know, we didn't get, they didn't get to sleep till 11 if they're lucky, you know, and then they're back up six o'clock, you know, and, and you would not believe the amount of youth we had for our devotions in the morning. It was just incredible. And, uh, uh, I witnessed a church family 500 miles away that from day one, shared in our devotions, and never missed a day. I mean, a a significant uh, presence there at our devotions. Just, it was was amazing. And then, uh, of course, then then Louie and Ralph, they, a hundred people, they, you know, or more that they touched this week, okay? Uh, We prayed with, we cried with, we rejoiced with all these people. Uh, and, And I'll bet you that Jesus has an awful hard time keeping from coming down here and, and, and interacting with these groups, you know, and one thing to fix up some of my plumbing mistakes and, and, and carpentry mistakes, but uh, not sure that every group that participates in this does it like our group, but we do it the right way. You guys do it the right way, and, and, and what, what an amazing thing. They, these leaders and everything deserve a round of applause because it's just incredible. <laughs> Hold on, one last, one last thing before the hook comes out. Thanks, everybody, for your prayers, your money, your encouragement, okay, and for carrying the load, you know, in these families that participated in this. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> I'm probably not going to talk that long. <laughs> Well, um, my dad already said it was our first time going. Um, I kind of went in with the idea that I was kind of going to be the hero and, like, helping people. Like, I was going to be, like, God's good servant. Like, he wanted me to go. It's going to be great. But it was kind of a selfish idea to go in with. Um, We met Sherry and Francis on Monday, and immediately after I met them, I wanted to get on the roof, and I was like, let's go. Let's help these people. They have leaks in their ceiling. Like, we, we need to help them. And I just was being really selfish and wanting to just, I wanted them to be thankful for me. But I think God noticed that that was really horrible for me to think, and he wanted to work on that all week. And on the second day, (laughs) I think he sent Emma to me because she totally rocked my world. She She's 10, or 10 going on 25, as Rachel says. She has an attitude, (laughs) but it's it's a great attitude. Um, She knocked me off my pedestal. She has what people call the faith to move a mountain. She is so confident in her faith. She told us that the exact day she accepted Jesus into her life. She told us on December 23rd last year, I got saved. And she was just so confident in God and how her faith was just amazing. 
and she's 10 years old and she's in the middle of nowhere. She has no friends around. She told us she has no friends at school, but she has more joy and confidence in her faith than I have ever had. And I think God sent her as a role model to me because I went in there thinking that I was going to help people and I wasn't going to be receiving anything. She, she gave me basically a desire for my trust in God to grow as large as hers was. Um, and by the end of the week, I didn't want to boast about what I had done. I mean, like we may have put a roof on her grandmother's house and helped them out and it was a great feeling to help them, but she helped me just as much as I helped her. She, she wanted, (laughs) she just gave me the desire to love as much as she didn't have as much confidence in her, in my faith as she did. It was just amazing to see her. (laughs) I know I don't have any time. I'm going to take two minutes. This is important. This was the close of what I had to say to you. I wish you could have been with me. Um, 96 miles a day up and down those mountains getting to them. Uh, we were so, and Ralph and I started every day between 3.30 and 4 a.m. Uh, we were in the shower and then we started our devotions getting prepared for this day. I do want to say this. Ralph made crosses and he gave each one of us a cross. I'm going to come at you from my heart because that's where I normally come from. But Ralph gave each one of us a cross and I gave mine to the manager at Hardy's who gave us extra ice when I needed it to continue. Hardy's took care of us. Uh, we got ice at the center, but we all, ice is a problem. Friday afternoon, uh, I want you to stand up. This is Jeff with a G. Uh, he's, he's from the Presbyterian Church. And Friday afternoon, he came to me. You, you can sit down. I lo- isn't he a handsome, isn't he a handsome, I hope you got to look at him, because I never looked at him, he wasn't smiling at me. Friday afternoon, he brought his cross and he put it in my hand. And then you have this circle Friday night when you share. And I listen to them all sharing, and I usually can't hardly get through it, and I'm, I'm, I'm about last. And I said, you know, when I was a little boy, I'm glad there's any children in here, because when I was a little boy... Jesus knocked at Louis Hart's door before he was five years old. And he said, I want in you. I want in you. And, and I said, come into my heart, Jesus. I might not understand what I'm doing, but I don't believe you become a Christian by osmosis. You got to say, come into my heart and he'll come in. Hmm? So I'm sitting out in the car after all this circles over and I'm, I'm getting updated on Susan and Bethany and my family, and this lady comes up from North Carolina. She says, here's my scripture, Louie. Here's my scripture. And then I go in, and we're, we're, she went in. I said, let me finish when I'll come in. Here comes Jeff up to me. Hmm? He, he, he said, I, knew, I always heard about God the Father and God the Son. I didn't know about God the Holy Spirit. Yeah, well, when Louie was five years old, he got all three. Hmm? Jeff walks up to me. The kid that gave me this cross, I'll quit, but I got to say this. This was the icing on the cake. He said, Louis, I went over in that corner over here. And I sat down and he said, I realized I never asked Jesus into my heart. Icing on the cake. And he said, I asked Jesus to come into my heart tonight. And, And that was the icing on the cake. And I said, you know what you just did? Jeff, it's over. It's done. It's finished forever. Praise God. And I hugged him and I said, I want you to come with me and go see Scott and Mike and whoever else we can get in here. Ralph was dead because he's been up since four o'clock in the morning. (laughs) And I said, I want you to tell them because the scripture says, if you confess me before men... I'll confess you before God in heaven. Got time for one more miracle? Just one more, Pastor, because it involves you. Those cooks, Karen, I went in and I said, can I pray for you? 
Is there anything specific? And Karen says, they started ball. Her sister Susan, the tears were shooting off her face. And they said, oh, our mama, oh, our mama Clara, 69 like my wife, 69 years old. And, and so Ralph and I, <laughs> sorry, Susan, I'm 71. What difference, mate? I'm going to Jesus when he calls me anyhow. Karen's husband's a preacher. We go up on that mountain. We took two of the ladies from North Carolina with us. And we sat with them. And mama's over in the other room. They were so stressed over mama. We were going to anoint her. We bought all of oil. It had no magic. But scripture, I would have read if I had time. We go in there. And, and, and Karen looks at me. And she said, I prayed. She's the preacher's wife. She said, I prayed that God would send somebody up here to us. I said, I'm telling you, here we are. He sent us. And she said, you know, the preachers, Sam, David, she said, the preachers, who looks after the preacher's family? Yeah, well, we're here for you anytime you need us. She said, nobody looks after us. I said, I'm here. God, she said, I believe that. Oh, how about, how about my, my brother down here accepted Jesus as a savior? This is his cross. He gave it to me before he even said that. I'll behave. I'll go sit down. 